often thank you everybody for inviting me here for listening and watching this uh, webinar. Uh, the name is written there. It's, it's Michele Di Paola from Italy. It's where we live. I live close to Milan. I've been doing youth work for many years. And then uh, since 2008, 2009, I started uh, playing with the idea of introducing non formal in, in non formal education some digital elements. And, and, and then it's basically it became the opposite. So uh, try to introduce non-formal education inside <laughs> digital elements and environments. Um, that was the, the training practice project that uh, I created with some colleagues out of my thought training of trainers. And from that moment on, I went uh, deeper and deeper into, into this concept of trying to find a way to uh, yeah, put together non-formal education and uh, digital environments, let's say it in, a, in the wider possible uh, sense. So uh, I have a few um, slides which are basically some sentences that I want to, to write there to help you remember. But before, uh, uh, I just wanted to, to share a few words about the situation we are in after one year, uh, the one year that made digital youth work a thing for a lot of people. Uh, before, when you were discussing about digital youth work, uh, you would see the, let's say, the same usual faces, uh, few people uh, around Europe which were interested in this topic, few agencies, few uh, places which would uh, uh, add contribution to the debate. And then all of a sudden, we all found ourselves well, just to be gentle in this situation in which we were kind of forced to go in digital environments and try to keep up with uh, youth work there. Uh, so yes, we made it more or less. After one year, we can say that we made it, but also after one year, uh, it's time we were discussing just about this before with Nerius and Limos. It, it is quite time to, to draw a line and to to tell each other, okay, this is good and can stay, and this should go. Moreover, if we keep the hope of sooner or later coming back to some kind of normality in which, of course, some of the previous ways of activities will finally come back, but others maybe could be different, could be more contaminated by what we learned in this, uh, in this year, and probably some of the ways of working that we had during these years could stay and uh, and become uh, new standards. So it's a matter of quality. And that would be my first sentence. So sharing my screen, you will see it clearly here. And the point and the question, the first question, uh, which I would ask you and underline as a first element to, to open up a, a discussion or reflection about digital youth work is exactly this one. What do we mean with quality? After this year, after all the debate, after the few documents, official documents that we uh, we got in the meanwhile, there's still a need to define clearly what quality means in this field. Uh, there is now, while we speak, now this will be recorded. So uh, now in March 2021, so we say to the future people which will watch this seminar, uh, uh, there is an ongoing activity, uh, the um, strategic uh, national agencies cooperation, I hope I remember well, but anyway, the snack about digital youth work, which is starting exactly, it has started a survey uh, among all the different national agencies on this topic, uh, what is quality in digital youth work. This topic of quality is being studied, is being uh, researched, but we still need to, to, to learn more. We are kind of walking blind in this, in this period, but after one year of working blind, was it out of experience? Was it out of improvisation? We are learning and we all have learned quite something. Huh? So my, my second point would be, let's try to recognize all the learning that we had during these months. Huh? Uh, probably, one year ago, this MOOC wouldn't have that much attention by many of you. 
because you know learning things online but now here we are all together probably uh, in the future we will consider at least consider uh, prep meetings before some activity that could be happen online because there's not that big need to go somewhere and spend three days in planes and trains just to spend a couple of days in a place and look around it can be done probably in a different way and so on and so on and so on and also this showed us that young people but there's probably something which many of us already knew young people have a very high rate of adaptability of resilience call it as you like and so once again we should also learn from them and maybe use their own experience to follow them in places where we can find tools, platforms, ways of using digital environments which are functional. Uh, the training world, the youth work world has discovered, for instance, platform like Discord, which by the way, in these days may end up being bought by Microsoft for $10 billion, which it's not that big amount, but for us in our economy of youth work, it's a huge amount of money. Uh, and, and these tools have been used by youngsters playing video games for years. And only lately, well, except the Finns, but yeah, we all should follow the Finns, as someone wrote in the, in the warm-up questions, uh, are trying to play with it now in our youth work. So there is a learning, there's a lot of learning happening and there is a lot of learning that we can extract from this year, from the experiences that we all gathered and from the experiences that young people have and can share. Not because uh, I don't believe this joke of digital natives is not that since one is born nowadays, then uh, it's born already knowing everything about digital tools. It's just because they are more inclined to experiment and learn about these things. And we are maybe more afraid of making mistakes. So let's use their attitude and let's experiment more. And talking to what we should keep under our eye uh, for a good digital youth work, uh, I think these are the two main words which are not so different from a good youth work overall interaction and engagement of our participants should be the way to go. The point is that interaction and engagement online are of course different and have to be achieved in different ways. Uh, it, it's, it's not anymore the point of sitting in front of your laptop and watching small boxes with, with faces and waiting for the situation to become as it was before. We have one year of time and many of us learned or uh, improved their capabilities and their abilities to create situation even inside online environments, which would have a lot of interesting interaction and engagement. So how interaction and engagements are achieved in online environments should be one of the elements that we should question uh, each other about. Let's go a step, for, uh, a step further than just having the problem of meeting. It is a problem, digital divide is a thing. So having everybody there connected with us, it's important, but then what? And speaking about digital divide, inclusion in online environments is difficult. It's more difficult. Uh, it's more difficult because there is a technical aspect because the devices are not affordable for everybody, because if you live in some rural areas, you don't even have good connections or good enough to be connected. But once again, we have enough creativity and fantasy to try to at least try to find workaround for these problems. For instance, Zoom can be accessed by a simple phone call. Nobody uses this feature ever. But if you don't have access to internet, you can anyway be connected with us now, just calling a special number. And this is just one simple example of things that we should consider and we should learn to use. Inclusion is more difficult and it's more difficult to have it by design in this kind of environments. 
the Salto Resource Center about uh, inclusion and diversity is creating an online, it's not a real publication, it's a website containing articles and podcasts and interviews in which I'm somehow involved, which is exactly about this topic. Because this is very, very important to understand how to provide inclusion in the digital environment uh, youth work. And then another element is scale and impact. Uh, online environments, digital youth work happening in an online environment have to compare itself with numbers which are not our use, usual number. We have a look to the YouTubers stars and they have followers in millions. And we are so proud when we reach 20, 30 youngsters and wow, we made it. Scale using these, these spaces and these tools can be dramatically increased. Impact can be dramatically improved. But then again, is this something that we are able to do? We write in our application that yes, there will be a dissemination and there will be a lot of activities to spread the voice around, but digital environments, digital tools are, let's say, born for this and we are really i have this feeling that we are really not exploiting their potential yet to the fullest there's a lot more here that could be done in terms of increasing our impact and our scale i mentioned youtubers for a purpose uh, streaming podcasting uh, going live on twitch these kind of things are things that are happening that have been happening in the in, in the youth world already for years and we are now maybe slowly trying to catch up with we should really look in that direction and so just to sum up and try to identify some elements that this question of quality brings with it if we ever had to, I don't know, compile a kind of a list of quality elements in digital youth work, what should we put there? You did it already before the, the recording and the broadcasting of this webinar on a Menti survey. And some of the elements that I saw there were matching with the ones which I wrote in the next slide that I'm showing you in a while. Other were different. Some of them also kind of unexpected. But I think that we should uh, always ask this question, which are the elements that can bring quality to my digital youth work activity? So here's a little list, which then I would really like to uh, go on and uh, improving and uh, adding more points in the following discussion. It's a bit small, but I guess you can read. Try to have an inclusive approach and, an, and to offer an inclusive environment by design. That means that you should take care and take into account before all the possible aspects leading to inclusion or lack to inclusion. And some of them are huge, like, as I said, devices, connections, but others are a bit more hidden like the fact that we base online everything on visual approaches and not everybody is able to use a visual approach, for instance. That's a simple example, but speaks a lot of the attitude that should, we should improve. Offering captions, subtitles, translations, sign languages, these things are easier to do online, but we are not doing them so much. So that's again, a field where we have a lot of space for improvement. And then interaction with participants and, and where to find it as in the Harry Potter spin-off movies. Uh, interaction with participants indeed are fantastic creatures. Uh, so where to find them? Again, as I said, as I mentioned, let's try to follow youngsters here. Where do they go to get engaged 
to find interaction when they are connected, when they are online. Do video games, for instance, have something to teach us about this? They surely have. There is a book by an American professor called James Paul Gee, which has exactly this title, what video games has to teach us about uh, literature, about literacy and learning, or learning and literacy. Well, it's a book published, I don't know, more than 10 years ago. And it's there to show us the way. Interaction means not only asking questions with Mentimeter, which is, of course, always a lot good, but also, for instance, allowing different times and spaces. And, and this is a way to achieve engagement. So next point, engagement of participants during the activities. When I'm doing digital youth work with someone, how can I be sure to engage them to the fullest? Sometimes it's not even mandatory to be all connected all the time. Maybe it's better to offer an interesting task and then tell everybody, guys, let's meet in half an hour and you do your thing with your own pace, in your own place, with your own tools, and then you show me. Instead of struggling with technical limitation and devices which do not work and whatever else. So again, engagement can be achieved in a lot of different ways. And we need, now we need, it's time to step forward this framework of small faces in boxes and think that this is digital youth work, it can happen in a number of other ways. Going around outside when we'll be able to go outside again with mobile phones and keep connection between groups can be a way to engage participants in digital activities. And I hope this will stay because this could open up a lot of very interesting outcomes. And then something which, again, we write often in our application and in our programs and in our projects, but uh, digital tools and media really help a lot to, to develop more. And so we could and we should develop more is to keep this engagement of participants also before and after the activities. If you establish a group, let's say on Discord, but can be also a WhatsApp group or whatever. Huh? They stay connected there. So why don't you invest some more energy and time to keep the connection ongoing? To ask the group after, after one week, after one month, after one year even, if they have something more to add to the topic that you work together with them. If they learn something more that they can share with the rest of the group. If now they have something to teach you because they became expert, maybe more than you. These elements, again, are way easier to achieve using digital tools and media. We don't have to organize a follow-up training course or another youth exchange or open up again our youth center, uh, recalling back the group which was here one year ago. In the digital spaces, the connections are kept and it's up to us to keep them alive as well. And then one last uh, point, and then as I mentioned before, the point of dissemination and measurement. Uh, the scale of possible dissemination online is vast. And I have this impression that our outreach should be as vast, but instead, Reaching out is difficult. Uh, it is difficult because we don't know how to use the tools and it is difficult because we have no clear idea on how we should reach out, which should be the places and the ways to reach out. Uh, there is no possible direct approach. I cannot go to someone and invite them to my activity. I cannot stick posters on the walls, I cannot go in some club and offer leaflets, but there are options which somehow can mimic this approach or maybe other approaches. I can go where people are online. I don't know how many of you tried and experimented something inside TikTok, for instance, but 
a huge and increasing numbers of very young people are now there enjoying this social platform made with videos. So why don't think about putting a video there? Thank <laughs> you.